Today, we'll be talking about a hero that has been played almost 1 billion times over Dota 2's entire lifespan. He is the most played hero across every rank, from Herald to Immortal, regardless of meta, patch, or time of year. He's so popular that you can expect to see him at least once every three games. People hate playing against him, but they hate playing with him even more. Ladies and gentlemen, Dota's most popular hero, the undeniable face of the game, is none other than... Crash Mate! Pudge the Butcher! What, did you think we were gonna talk about Jug? He can't be the face of the game. We don't even know if he has one. So what makes Pudge so popular? Well, obviously, it's because of his great tits. But another big reason for his popularity is because of his iconic meat hook. On paper, it's a simple spell. You throw it out then, if it hits, you pull your target closer to you. Almost always resulting in a kill for your team. Not a big deal, right? I mean, League has pretty much the same thing in Blitzcrank, but he's nowhere near as popular. The ability to displace enemies in an impactful manner isn't the only reason why Pudge is as popular as he is. Because if that were the case, Magnus would be the most picked hero because of his skewer shenanigans, where he can displace not just one hero, but the entire enemy team. But remember that Dota is a game of point and click abilities and AoE spells. Pudge's hook is one of the only true skill shots in the game where you have to hit your target and nothing else to achieve your desired effect. And let's be real here, hitting skill shots is fun. It's a dopamine inducing part of any video game. So much that Riot has built their game where almost the entire roster has some form of skill shot. And forget the hero being a cash cow, his hook alone has probably earned Valve more money than the average American makes in a year. With four different immortal items for his hook and a few variations, with each one changing the hook's effect, with one of them costing about 200 US dollars. Relative to the rest of Dota's spells, Pudge's hook is incredibly hard to land. If you're not used to its projectile speed and hitbox, you're likely to miss many, many, many attempts. But when you do land a hook, you almost always turn the succeeding team fight into a 4v5. Pudge players live for that feeling of landing a hook that completely seals the game or shifts the momentum into his team's favor. Now, what puts it above other spells that displace the enemy, like Vengeful Spirit's Nether Swap or Magnus's Horn Toss Skewer, is that it puts Pudge at almost zero risk. Let's take a look at the other examples. When you swap an enemy in, it almost always results in Venge's death. This means that the ensuing teamfight will end up being a 4v4. Magnus has to put himself in a position where he's vulnerable to being hexed or silenced before he can skewer away. His skewer can also get interrupted by stuns, meaning it's not the most reliable getaway tool. Pudge just misses a skill shot. He can try again in 12 seconds. Meat Hook also illustrates one of Dota's best aspects, rewarding players' creativity. Not only is it a great tool for fighting, but it's a really good ability in the early laning stage where you can land a hook on a large neutral creep or a siege creep and instantly secure the bounty. And finally, it also functions as a save. It's not purely an initiation tool. You can hook teammates towards you and literally pull them out of a sticky situation. Another aspect about him that makes him very fun to play is his ability to perma scale. League players who use characters like Nasus, Vagar, and Smolder, f this guy by the way, can attest to how satisfying it is to see their counter go up, and Pudge is no exception. When Pudge kills a hero, or even if they're just within his vicinity when they die, Pudge gains a stack of flesh heap, giving him bonus strength. This means that every single kill he's involved in gives him extra HP, HP regen, and right click damage. And in a game like Dota where 45 minutes to an hour is the norm, Pudge can get really tanky over the course of a match. I've seen Pudges get over 30 stacks of flesh heap in one of those hour long Dota matches. That's 3000 extra gold worth of stats for free. Correct me in the comments if my math is wrong. But I personally feel the best thing about Pudge is the fact that despite all of this, he's pretty balanced. Pudge is balanced around how well the player can manage his resources. That means the player piloting him needs to be able to play around Pudge's HP, mana, and cooldowns to be able to play this hero to his full potential. Pudge's main damage tool isn't his right clicks, but his second spell, Rot, which activates his Tekken player powers and turns him into a walking heap of stink. While his Rot is activated, enemies near him will continuously take damage and are slowed. It also has no mana cost nor maximum duration. Sounds powerful, right? The catch is that Pudge's Rot also affects himself, dealing the same damage to his own health bar, so you need to know when to turn Rot on or off 
or itemize accordingly. Pudge is also stupid. He has a low base intelligence stat and below average int gain, meaning his mana pool is garbage, making his hook an incredibly mana intensive spell. So he either has to itemize for mana or be very careful about his positioning and hook usage. He's also incredibly immobile. He has one of the lowest base speeds in the game at 280 and can you blame him? He isn't exactly built to run a 30 minute 5k. He also has no mobility built into his base kit, meaning it's very easy to feed if you get caught out. And finally, his tankiness doesn't kick in until later on in the game. He may be a strength hero, but his base armor is almost non-existent. I've been able to kill level 2 Pudges who think they can score an easy kill by hooking and turning on Rot simply by right clicking him to death. To help with this, Flesh Heap has an active component that allows him to block a portion of all damage taken, including Rot. But when it's off, Pudge goes back to his deceptively squishy self. I believe the fact that Pudge is a balanced hero plays a role in how popular he is. When you're dominating as Pudge, you're not doing it because you picked him in the right situation and it's a clear outdraft, like when you pick Broodmother or Meepo, or because your hero is innately overpowered. You're dominating as Pudge because you're playing well. But what happens when you aren't? What happens if it's just one of those games where you can't land a hook to save your life? That is exactly why, despite this hero's popularity, nobody wants to play with a Pudge on their team. A tilted Pudge is one of the worst things you can have as a teammate, up there with Dota streamers, pro Dota players, or Shadow Fiend. I've seen Pudge players get so tilted after missing just a few hooks early game, then getting tipped, that they decided to use Hook exclusively for hitting siege creeps and jungling, and completely sacked what would have been a winnable lane. The worst part is, and I'm sure you can relate, is that these types of Pudge players are always the ones that end up on my team. This hero produces an effect that I would like to dub the Pudge Theorem, where if your teammates picks Pudge, he will proceed to miss every hook, even on stun targets, whereas if the enemy picks Pudge, he will hit every hook, even blind ones, and then just absolutely face roll your team for the rest of the game. Thankfully, after a few changes over the years, a Pudge who doesn't hit his hooks isn't completely useless anymore. Besides Hook being used as a utility tool, upon buying Shard, you allow Pudge's ult, Dismember, which is usually a simple channeled stun on a targeted enemy, to eat your teammate, making them untargetable and drastically increasing their HP regen. For you bleed players out there, Yes, it's Tom Kench ult on a 15 second cooldown. Genuinely, it's one of the best saves in the game because the cast time is almost instant and can be used to protect your teammates against powerful abilities like Necrophos' Reaper Scythe or Mirana's Sacred Arrow, but its cast range is just a bit over melee range. But while Pudge can be used as a defensive support, he is meant to be an X Factor. If you're reserving your hooks and dismembers as saves, that's damage that isn't being used on enemies or mana that's not being used effectively. If you want to play a defensive support, go pick Shadow Demon. Hook and Dismember are damaging spells, and while they can be used defensively, they're still primarily meant to be used on enemies. He's too squishy to frontline without items, his saves are helpful but unreliable, and his initiation potential has way too many variables. If you cannot hit your hooks as Pudge, you might as well have picked a different hero like a Tidehunter or Shadow Demon. And this is what kept Pudge on the sidelines for the longest time when it came to pro play. Outside of a few key matches in the game's history, Pudge was only ever seen as a pocket pick, only ever used by a handful of players. The most prominent being Dendi when he was still on Na'Vi. The hero was just way too unreliable, and you never knew if the pick was going to pan out, especially with such exploitable weaknesses. Until Rot Pudge became a thing. For the longest time, Pudge's Rot was an afterthought of an ability. In the earliest days of Dota, the only way to play Pudge was as a mid laner so he could get a fast level 6 and start roaming and ganking with a max level hook. But the changes to hook over the years meant you got reduced benefits from leveling it up. That along with the new Agadims that buffs Rot's damage and radius and a talent that increased the potency of its slow meant that Pudge's role was no longer to wait in the trees and hope he can hit a hook. He was meant to buy Blink get into the middle of the fight, and just kind of sit on the enemy team until they die. And this is what skyrocketed Pudge into the highest levels of play. Now the hero is considered a viable pick, and as a position 1 carry of all things because of how much gold he needs to be effective. And many top players can pilot him now, 
like Pure and Watson. Before, people didn't want to play with a pudge because it meant it would be a coin flip if the guy could hit his hooks or not. Now, that's still there, but people also don't want to play with a pudge because it means the core position was already filled and they have to pick support. The truth remains is that pudge as a pick is often outclassed in terms of what he can offer to a team. There are stronger magic damage carries, more reliable initiators, tankier frontliners, and other picks who are just more suitable than this fat piece of sh**. But Pudge is, and has always been, the most popular hero, not because of how good he is and how much he offers to the team, but because of how fun he is to play. Which is why I play Turbo and ban him every game. But how can Pudge be the face of Dota when he barely appears in any kind of promotional material for the game? Doesn't that just completely contradict what I said in the last video? And to that I say, take a look at Dota's marketing in the past few years. Dota's marketing is done almost entirely via word of mouth, wherein the internal audience is the one speaking to an external audience and promoting the game, and therefore the most popular hero gets the highlight. But in a lot of ways, Pudge represents the best of what Dota 2 has to offer. An ever-evolving meta, dynamic gameplay, diverse builds that are limited only by their player's creativity, and of course, great tits. If you liked the video, be sure to check out my other content as well. I try to do video essays on a wide array of topics relating mainly to Dota and League and how they compare to each other in different aspects. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. Ace out!